Now we are going to understand bond valuation. Bond is an instrument of debt issued by a business or especially by a government. So when a government requires money, it issues bond in the general public and can gather money. On that bond, a par value of face value is written, which is the amount borrowed by the government, which is also promised by the government to be repaid on maturity. So, for example, if the par value is 1 lakh rupees, you are uh, gave, giving the government 1 lakh rupees, that's the par value of the face value. And let's say for 5 years, so after 5 years, the government is going to repay you that 1 lakh rupees. The coupon rate is nothing but the interest rate paid by the bondholder or the government every year. So every year at the end of each year, you are going to get certain interest which is decided by that coupon rate. So you are going to get the interest every year, year after year and even in the final year, in the final year you are going to get that your face value or the maturity value. So the annual interest payable which can be written as capital I is nothing but the coupon rate or the interest rate multiplied by the par value which is written on the bond. The bond is said to be redeemed or payback, mostly as a single payment after the bond matures, means the time period for which the bond was issued gets over. The required rate of return is the minimum acceptable return on investment sought by individuals or companies considering an investment opportunity. Which means that if, suppose I'm not going to buy this bond, I'm interested in some other investment. So what is the required rate of return or the minimum acceptable return I'm seeking to get from that investment? So this depends upon the market factors. Let capital B be the overall present value of the bond. So B represents the value of the bond. I is the annual interest payable. M stands for maturity value, which is also the same as the par value return or the face value return on the bond. So M stands for maturity value. N is the number of years or the term of the bond. K of D is that fixed discount rate or the rate of return that we are expecting on that investment to be earning somewhere else. PVIFA is the present value of interest factor of annuity. So A stands for annuity, while PVIF is the present value of that interest factor. Remember, we do not take future values, we only take the present value. This is with respect to the annuity, and this is with respect to the present value as of today. And both these numbers, we need to get these numbers by looking at the table where the number of years column and the interest column is nothing but the required rate of interest which uh, we should consider. So the required rate of interest needs to be intersected with the number of years and not the coupon rate. Remember, not the coupon rate. And the yield to maturity is nothing but the discount rate, KD, for which the intrinsic value of the bond is equal to its market value which means that the value of KD is that value for which B, which is the overall present of the value of the bond, is equal to the purchase price of the bond. We are going to understand this in an example. And the interest, the annual interest payable, is calculated as coupon rate multiplied by the maturity value. So the total overall present value of the bond is given as I, which we have calculated over here, multiplied by PVIFA, which is this particular number which we will get from the table, while M will be multiplied with PVIF, and then we need to add them up. Now remember, we are going to get the interest every year, so that is why we are considering the annuity table, while the maturity value is that value which we are going to get at the end of the term. So we are only considering the present value in perspective and not of the annuity. Let us understand this with some examples. A bond with a par value of 20,000 rupees bears a coupon rate of 12% and matures in 5 years. The required rate of return on the bond is 
calculate the value of the bond. Which means that if I'm not going to buy the bond, I'm expecting 10% somewhere else. But the government is giving me 12% as the coupon rate for the investment or the buying of the bond of 20,000 rupees. So I'm going to get 20,000 rupees after five years directly. So I need to invest 20,000 rupees right now. So calculate the value of the bond as of today. So the maturity value of the bond is 20,000. The coupon rate is 12%. Number of years is five. The required rate of return is 10%. So PV IFA is given in table number four and PVIF is given in table number two. And if you intersect the, don't consider the coupon rate, if we intersect the number of years five and the required rate of return as 10%, we'll get in table number four, 3.79 and in table number two, 0.62. So I is the coupon rate multiplied by the maturity value. So 12% into 20,000 is 2,400 which means that every year for five years, I'm going to get 2,400 rupees. So the overall present value of the bond is I multiplied by PVIFA plus M into PVIF. So 2,400 multiplied by this number 3.79 and the maturity value 20,000 multiplied by 0.62. Multiplying these two numbers, we get 9,097. Multiplying these two, we'll get 12,480. And adding up and approximating it, we'll get 21,516 rupees and 31 paisa. Which means that if I'm going to buy the bond at rupees 20,000, the present value of which is 21,516, I think I should be buying this because the present value of the bond overall is more than 20,000. So let me break this up and explain it to you again. So I'm getting 2,400 for five years, which is nice. So I'm going to get 2,400 multiplied by five, which is approximately 12,000 rupees. Yeah, that's 12,000 rupees. But 12,000 rupees I'm not getting today itself. I'm going to get it in installments. So it is as if I'm getting 9,000 rupees and 9,097 rupees today itself and not 12,000 rupees. And the 20,000 rupees I'm giving to the government, it is as if that I'm going to receive only 12,418 rupees as of today. I'm going to get 20,000 rupees after five years, no doubt. But as of today, it is as if I'm getting only 12,418 rupees. But I'm also getting going to get the interest, adding them up, it is 21,516 which is more than 20,000 present value, which means that this is a profitable thing. A bond with a power value of 5,000 bears a coupon rate of 8% and matures in four years. Interest is payable semi-annually, which means that instead of taking four years, we have to take eight semesters and Instead of considering 8% per annum, we should be considering 4% per six months. The required rate of return is 12%. Calculate the value of bond. So the maturity value is 5,000. The coupon rate is, as I told you, 4%. The number of uh, periods is 8. The required rate of return is 6. This also needs to be divided by 2. And if you look at the table, we'll get PVIFA is 6.20 or 21. Remember, don't consider the coupon rate, intersect N and the required rate of return. And PVIF is 0 0.62. So first we'll calculate how much interest are we going to get every year. So we are going to get at the rate of 4% coupon rate on the maturity value of 5,000. So I'm going to get 200 interest eight times. So four years, but two times a year, eight times. So we are now going to calculate the value of the bond, which is this 200 multiplied by this 6.020 and this 5000 multiplied by 0 0.62 to get 1241 plus 3137 to get approximately 4379 and 02. 
So the overall present value of the bond is 4,000 rupees, which is way less than 5,000 rupees. So this investment is not a profitable investment. So again, I'm going to get 200 rupees eight times. So I'm going to get 1,600 rupees. But the present value of those 1,600 rupees, which I'm going to get in installments, is only 1,241. And the 5,000 rupees I'm going to give to the government, which the government is going to give to me after four years, is as if the government is giving me 3,000 rupees to let sell. Adding them, we are not getting the 5,000 rupees. So this is not a profitable thing. A bond with a power value of 15,000 rupees bears a coupon rate of 10% and matures in 5 years. This bond is being currently sold at 16,000 rupees. Calculate the required rate of return or calculate the discount rate KD on the bond or calculate the yield to maturity. Which means that the bond, of course the face value is 15,000 rupees but I'm not going to get it for 15,000 rupees. I'm getting it for a premium. I need to pay 1,000 more. I'm going to get it for 16,000 rupees. But the government is going to pay me a coupon rate of 10% on 15,000 only, remember, for five years. So you need to tell, if I'm going to buy this today itself, what is the yield to maturity? What is the required rate of return so that even if I buy it for 16,000 rupees, I do not undergo any loss. So what should be the required rate of return? So we have been told that maturity value is 15,000. The government is only going to give me 15,000, not 16,000 remember. The coupon rate is 10%. Number of years is 5. The required rate of return is how much? So first we are going to calculate the yearly interest. Coupon rate multiplied by the maturity value, which is 0 0.1 into 15,000, which is 1,500. And then we will find the uh, present value of the bond, overall present value, which is I multiplied by PVIFA plus M into PVIF, but then there's a problem. I know what is the interest, 1500 rupees every year, but I do not know what is PVIFA. And I do not know PVIF because, uh, you know, in order to get these numbers from the table, I need to know the required rate of return. But I certainly know that if this discount rate is 0.1%, which is equal to the coupon rate, then the value of the bond should be 15,000 rupees or if there is a rounding off in this table, it should be approximately 15,000 rupees. So if this KD is exactly equal to 0 0.1, then the present value of the bond should be 15,000 rupees. I'm not going to get any loss or profit. So if you look at this table, you can see that at 10% coupon rate, which is over here for a number of years five which is over here i'm intersecting them remember i'm looking at table number four which is of pvifa i'm getting this number i'm getting 3.790787 but remember the present value of the bond for neither profit nor loss should be 16,000. so this pvifa with this particular number 3.79 and the PVIF of course looking at that table also will give us a total value of the bond at 15,000 only not 16,000. So this number should be a little bigger and of course this number should also be bigger. So if you look at this column the numbers become bigger as we climb up means when the interest rate goes down. So 3.79 this number 3.88 is bigger so the interest rate, the required rate of return should be less than 10%. It could be 9% or 8% or 7% or somewhere in between them. Then only this present value of the bond will become 16,000 because I'm buying it for 16,000. So let us first start with the discount rate to be 9%, which means 9% is to be intersected with number of years 5 to get 3.88. So, let us assume that the required rate of return is 0 0.09, which is 9%. So, if we look at the table number 4, we get 3.88. And again, intersecting N is equal to 5 and required rate of return as 9%. To table number 2, we get PVIF as 0.64. Now, we are going to substitute in this formula. So, we write I as 1500, which we had already calculated. 
maturity value is 15,000 and if you multiply them and then add this up, you are getting 15, 5, 83 and 44. But you are not getting 16,000, a little less than 16,000. So the interest rate of 9% should be even lower, even lesser. So then let us take 8%. Again, on intersecting the table, n is equal to 5 and interest percent is 8%. We are getting PVIFA as 3.99, which is a bigger number than the previous one, and PVIF is 0 0.68. Again, on multiplying the numbers, on substituting, we are getting 1697.81.81. This is bigger than 16 numbers. So, our answer should be somewhere between 8% required rate of return and 9% required rate of return. Let us say if 8% corresponds to 1697.81 and 9% had corresponded to 15583.44, some percentage in between them, let's say X percent, will exactly correspond to 16,000, the market value of that bond. So we'll use the proportion. First, we subtract 8 x minus 8, which corresponds to 16,000 minus 16,197, and 9 minus x corresponds to 15,583 minus 16,000, and then 9 minus 8 also corresponds to 15,583 minus 16,197. Since this does not have any x, we can take this with any of the two. We take the first and the last one, we subtract these two numbers to get minus 197, we subtract these two to get minus 614. We cross multiply the negative 197 over here. We cancel off the signs, negative signs. We divide these two numbers to get 0 0.32. We take the minus 8 on the other side to get plus 8. 8 plus 0 0.32 is 8.32. So this x percentage is approximately equal to 8.32. So this is the yield to maturity or the required rate of return. I hope you understood this. Please share the video, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.